buy price, the first buy price was 530. Was oh, this the woman that passed away? We're doing that one? No, no, no. no. Okay. No. How much? The reason why I say first buy is because I originally started marketing the property and I came across a really good potential buyer that uh, with his qualifications and what he had lined up, I felt like he was going to be a great buyer to work with. So I wanted to make it really make it work. So I kind of hustled on this one. So what I did was I had the, the house. No, it's 530, not 430. Sorry. Sorry. Keep going. I'll, I'll correct Okay. So I, uh, excuse me. We came under contract at 530. I took it on the market at 575. Uh, that was kind of pushing the price, but you never know what the market brings. So we put it out there. This guy wanted to work, but he said that him and his wife don't want to pay more than 550. No matter what they do, they had oh, the down I payment. Remember. They had great jobs. Um, they, had, they had plenty of income to support uh, the loan and, and to qualify uh, when they cash out. Uh, so they just need to work on the credit just a little bit, just to be qualified. Mm -hmm. And what I did was Chris, I talked to Chris about it and Chris goes, well, this is easy. You have a buyer in hand, you know, he's got the down payment. He's got everything to qualify. Go back to the seller and say, Hey, I got a buyer in hand. Um, and this is what it's going to take to get them uh, in the, in the home. And we were kind of pushing on a little bit over 60 days of marketing this property. So we're getting close to that 90 day mark. They were making payments already for a couple months, so they were starting to feel the heat uh, of, you know, every month money going out of their pocket and us not putting anybody in the home. And the guy originally said, that's it, 530 was it. The seller. The seller, yeah. He wasn't yeah. going to budge, supposedly. Supposedly, yeah. So I went back and I told them they were both on the phone, the husband and wife. I said, hey, I got a guy, but he's got to be at, and Chris says, just throw out a random number. That way it looks like you calculated it. <laughs> and uh, I don't know why we always come up with a three seven hundred so I came down to five oh three seven hundred was the number so I dropped it down almost twenty seven thousand dollars and literally on that phone call they didn't have to hang up and go back and and kind of discuss it they made the decision and agreed to drop it twenty seven grand on the phone with me that moment so essentially and then you did 550 and then I did 550 yes it was the sale price so I dropped it to meet the buyers request and usually you know we don't do that but so i wanted we, to get the house okay, sold so clarify you dropped this 25 and that 27 so I, and it still came up a couple grand extra. from my original price extra what was that yeah. exactly i came up more than what i had originally and mm -hmm. uh the guy both sides were happy because we got someone in the house within a couple weeks because it was already a vacant home um, and we can go through the rest of the... Yeah, so is it different when Mike, if Mike was to say to him at the beginning, trying to get him down, like to Ed's scripts this morning, is it different than when he calls and says, I have a buyer, I can move now, it's totally different. Yeah. That just means though that that guy had well, Mike, head. Mike, 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 Mike. No, I have a mic. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'm attached to a mic. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, I was saying that just means that that guy had in his head, so just going to Ed's point, had in his head that probably 500,000 was his lowest. Yeah. You know what I mean? sure. Now that we figured that out. Cause well, they, they originally had it on the market for, uh, well, they had it appraised in, in seven, 2017 for 530. So they're like, okay, if it appraises for 530 and 17, then I should get that. So I'm like, okay, let's see, let's take it to the market and see what we can get for it. Yeah. You know, and Good that's what we, what we did. Okay, summary? Summary. Uh, okay, payday one, they put 25 grand down. They are giving me, uh, they're going to put down 10%. Uh, over a two-year period, so uh, they're putting an additional 500 a month oh, plus. on top of their rent payment, 500 a month, going towards the down. And uh, payday two, yeah, it's uh, $200. It's not much of a spread, but I made it work. And uh, then, um, okay, go ahead. What's the principal paid on the loan? It's 600 bucks. He has a good loan on the house. It's a, it's a VA loan, so the interest rate was really low. Uh, How many? It's term? probably over that, but that's a, I'm sorry, uh, uh, two years, 24 months. Okay, so what's the um, 550? Uh, sorry, I didn't calculate the last part there. Uh, roughly, we'll go rough, 37,000 less the 25? So far, before I go to the 500? 
Yeah, it's, like a, total. it's like a seventy thousand dollar deal, I think. Let's the see. whole thing? Yeah, it's uh let's see, twenty seven and uh, You got twenty seven here less than twenty five. So you're a couple grand plus this this is twelve grand. No no no, that's forty seven. Yeah, like 46. I said, like I said, forty-seven. <laughs> Less than oh, twenty-five. This is terrific. <laughs> hey, let me, let me. It's great when you drop off. Okay. What is he drinking in there? Yeah, we're okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, so yeah. it's uh, twenty-two k there. Forty-six plus the six. Uh, you're talking about fourteen and another uh, two, another uh, uh, what? Five grand. Nineteen plus the forty-seven gives you what? 68 or whatever. Plus 65 okay. grand. I almost like the average. It's like 67. Mike's average, yeah. Your yeah. average is right around there. Okay. <laughs> Ryan will make this look pretty. On top of that, on top of that, he had a, a classic car. Oh, this is the one? This is the one. And uh, the buyer, or excuse, the buyer, he had a classic car and he goes, uh, I was trying to get actually 30 grand down on the house and I kept pushing for that. So that's the minimum I could take. He goes, I have 25 grand I could do now. The rest I'll pay you over time. He goes, but on top of that, I have a classic car that's worth anywhere from 12 to 15, which he pumped up a little bit. It's not worth that. But uh, I knew I can get a minimum of anywhere from probably from five, for, uh, five to 8,000 on the car. And I took the car in, got the pink slip and everything, but didn't, I got put, the picture, it, want to see it. But didn't put it anywhere in the contract. So I didn't give him credit for the car. He just gave it to me. So actually, you could add another five to eight grand to that. Uh, I do have to sell the car on my own, of course. It's in my brother's garage right now. But uh, <laughs> the weather is getting, it's a, it's a convertible uh, classic 1965. Anyone want it? <laughs> Dynamic 88. I don't know if you guys. Hey, remember what the next step says. If you guys use the next step forms, because Nick did it. it. It gives them hints. Yeah. yeah. Like cars, exactly. motorcycles, RVs, jewelry. What do you got? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this thing's actually halfway decent. And Kim's like, Mike's coming up, ask him what we're doing that. Kyle, why did we do that? I said, he did, I didn't do it. So of course I didn't oh, turn it down. I took the, I took the car in, because I'm like, why not? It should be easy to sell. If I, even if I wanted to dump it, I can yeah, get a couple five. grand for it, or five grand. So uh, yeah, so that's that's Which that's is your idea. average real solid, 65-ish. Yes, for sure, 65. Good deal, you guys? Okay, we need uh, the other mic, wherever it is. Mike, do we have another one somewhere? We do. Yeah, right here. Let's try to go in order. Matney, then the back corner. Yeah, because I don't know what your answer is. Okay. 500 bucks of extra principal pay down, is that part of the equity enhancement program function, or is that just straight Good to question. principal? No. We I didn't just, give it to him. No, I, I told him you have to put uh, ten percent down because it's going to be a jumbo loan that they're going to have to get, uh, and I felt more comfortable with that house to go through and and, and complete the sale in the end to cash out with ten percent down. Uh, so I made it a point in the beginning when I first met with them saying, "I'll take your initial deposit of twenty-five, but you have to understand that programs are out there right now require ten percent minimum." And they said, "No problem. Over time, I could put that down." So. Extra cash flow, 500 more bucks a month on top of the 200. On top of the two. On top of the 25. Uh, it's pretty nice for one deal. Yeah. Well, this is important how he positioned it though, Matt, because he said to him, it's what, now, granted he likes the cash flow, but he said to him to get you in a better position to get your loan, which is probably going to take, it yeah. was all about him. You want to set them up to succeed, and you even tell them that. Yeah. I'm, I want to set you up to succeed and uh, get you to the finish line. This is what it's going to take. <clears throat> Else. Way in the back right corner after length, and then we'll uh, go to the next deal. Another really, another really important component is the mortgage lenders are going to be looking to, looking to see that they've paid a payment similar to what the payment is going to be when they actually get a mortgage. So I've got a, I've got a buyer paying an extra $1,083 a month, which is just positive cash flow for me, but it's to justify them being able to get a $475,000 loan in the next 24 months. So. There's a, there's a really solid, legitimate reason that you are helping them help you. You yeah, saw Jerry yeah. McGuire. Uh, way in the back right, and then we'll go to your, uh, I think we'll go to one more yours, and then we'll go to scripts, and then come back. So what's, uh, I didn't understand, what's the $500 a month? Extra down payment, because Mike wanted them over time to get to 10%, and they were only at 25, which is a five-ish. They're, okay. they're actually also, 
putting more into another account and they're showing me the receipt every month, even though I'm not receiving it on save top more. of that. That way in the end of their term, actually we calculate it to the end before the 24 months, uh, they have the full 10%. And uh, what, what was the mortgage payment and uh, what's the rent? The, I charged How do you them get to this? $29.95 was the mortgage, or excuse me, that's their payment, monthly rent payment. And uh, it's 200 bucks less, my payment, 27 something, that's about 200 bucks. <laughs> Okay, so my question here is when, um, let's, say, let's say the seller uh, mortgage payment is $1,000, right? And let's say that the, you can uh, you know, market it and you can sell it, can rent it to a, a tenant buyer for 1600 But the seller is not happy with the $1,000 mortgage payment. He wants 1400 What do you do in this case? There's a couple of options. What I would do, if he's adamant about it and you really like the house, take the 200 or meet in the middle somewhere, but have him give you the credit on what he's making on that month on the back end. Principal. So that's what I would do. I don't know. We that's one about way. That's, that's one way. I don't know. I, I, I don't think I, we've ever done it. I think that's part of their posturing. That's why I wanted your opinion, but I think it's posturing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just don't want to take over any you know, responsibilities of the property, yeah. uh, and I'm going to make your your PITI, because if anything were to happen, I have to take over responsibility and make all those payments to take care of the property. Um, but it, it's gonna depend on the back end as well, right? So if it makes, if you're gonna get like a ton of principal pay down and you get, you're able to mark this property up a lot so it's worth you staying in the deal, then maybe you have that conversation. But I definitely would want anything I'm giving to them extra credited. Yeah. Because remember too, you gotta protect yourself. You gotta buy that defaults. You're now liable for that for that seller for fourteen hundred dollars. It's not a thousand. Right. You're liable now for that fourteen hundred dollars every month if the house is vacant. So protect yourself by just taking over the full expenses. That's all we take over. Um, but if they really admin on that, and you can you can tell me if I'm going too fast. But if you're really admin on that, then I would just switch to an AO and I would just take a nice percentage of front and I decided to them if that's what they want. The other issue on that is if they sometimes in their head is I can get fourteen on the open on my rent. So I want 14. Yes. That's one thing they come up with. Yes. Right, but on a rent, you make them answer this. On a rent, what yeah. are you then gonna pay out of that 14? Sometimes taxes on escrow, they might say, well, I gotta pay my taxes for 100. Um, well, you also have to cover maintenance, right? If they call you and the toilet's clogged or the roof or leaks. Or property manager, which is gonna be 10%. That's when it all sucked up real quick yeah. if they have a problem with that house for maintenance. So you just point that out and say, I'm taking all that risk away from you. And you usually don't have an issue. We never have an issue that I can think of. But if Again, my, my point is, you know, there is a huge difference between $1,000 and, and $1,600. At least if they say, okay, I can get $1,200 or $1,300. My point is, what do you do in this case? Do you, do you give this extra uh, $300, $200 to the seller uh, besides the spread that you, you have? You can, like Zach said, and you can, and you can do what Mike said and take it off the back end. There's no wrong answer. It's negotiable. I'm telling you, from your, once you get good at posturing in scripts, You'll no. keep all that money. You won't give that back. Yeah, as soon as but somebody okay if you do it the first, starts the telling me they want to spread uh, or addition to their expenses, I automatically start thinking AO unless no the way. terms no. as no far as way. the back end are worth me staying in the middle because you're taking on extra liability. So you yeah. better get paid off better on the back end. If not, we always look at it as either we're fully in, we're taking responsibility, or we're out. And we just take a non funnel deposit and we, and we scoot and move on to the next deal. So you usually cover only the uh, mortgage payment? Mm -hmm. Yes. P-I-T-I. P-I-T-I. -I. Plus, of course, maintenance and repairs and all that stuff anyways. You're, you're taking over the property fully. I think one important Chad. thing maybe Mike. Not, I think one important thing maybe he's not thinking of is that the seller doesn't need to know the 1600 that you're Correct. Yeah. Unless, I have to say that too. Unless you're setting it up as an AO. Yep. Uh, he doesn't know that number. So, yeah, it's, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, we never, I, I never, uh, tell them how much I'm gonna put on the market for on the monthly rent price or lease price. I just tell them I'm gonna cover their payment. Yeah, because Mike's the buyer, right? He hasn't introduced a third party other than the fact that he might say, well, yeah, that's how I get paid is I work with a third party. But in the, he's the buyer, he's the one taking over everything. There's no need to tell them how much you can get on the open market unless you're going to an AO. Yes, but they know that they, the rental uh, uh, market the area is 1600 they know that they okay know so i'm back to my thing with yes you might be right the rental market's 1600 but this isn't a rental i'm buying your house so again script 
They're going to say it. You're right. It's how you get out of it.